Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a fantasy horror film, Digging Up the Marrow. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins at a convention in which different people, like artists, comedians, cosplayers, filmmakers, actors, and even genre journalists, share why monsters caught their attention and interest. Most believe that monsters exist in real life and could live everywhere where humans cannot see them. The scene then transitions to Aries Scope Pictures in Hollywood, a feature film and television production company owned by filmmaker Adam and cinematographer Will. Adam has done some famous horror movies such as Frozen, the Hatchet franchise, Spiral, and the TV series called Holliston. Because of his line of work, Adam has received gifts from some unique people, but one particular thing caught his attention. It is from a man named William, who sent him a notebook and claims that he has found proof that monsters exist. William wants Adam to publicize his discovery. Adam arrives at William's residence with Will to start documenting. After settling in, the documentary begins with William introducing himself and claiming that he is a retired police detective. William shares that in every generation, there are children who are born different. These different children are given cruel nicknames such as monsters, freaks, and rejects. Because of their biological indifference, these children disappear when they reach a certain age and no one knows where they go. Although it is cruel to think, some people do not care if these children vanish. Nevertheless, William does not forget they exist, and he believes that they are living not far away from society. He calls their place the Marrow, which is some 100 yards beneath the Earth's surface, where these so-called rejects mirror the way humans live. William believes that everything happening above the surface also occurs in the Marrow, where these rejects can be free as they like. Adam asks William to begin and share his story about growing up, to which William does. He is an only child and did not have any real friends as a kid, so he had to keep himself busy. There was this lumber company that William considered his special place. It was his fortress. One late evening, William was late for supper, so he hurriedly came out of his fortress. But as he went out of the yard, he saw a man standing by an old woodpile. William claims what he saw was not a human. It had a serpent's mouth and forked tongue and when it blinks, its eyelids close from the side. The creature only stared at him before jumping behind the woodpile and vanishing without a trace. William never shared the encounter with anyone, even his parents, because he knew they wouldn't believe him. He never encountered that creature again, but he has seen many others lurking in the woods, hiding in the darkness. About three months ago, William accidentally discovered the entrance to the marrow. After the shooting, Will captures the chain door in William's house. When he and Adam attempt to open it to see what's inside, William firmly says no. The following day, while at Adam's house, Adam's wife expresses her belief that it is a stupid idea to film a documentary about the existence of monsters. However, Adam has always been into monsters as a kid. He wants them to be real, and now that he has William, he has the opportunity to prove it. Later that day, William takes them to the park, which is in the woods, and has a cemetery. They walk past it, and about 100 yards from it is the entrance to the marrow. William warns them not to make any noise and be silent, but then they observe from afar. The only thing that the camera can capture is the entrance to itself because of its distance from them. The night arrives, and they still have not captured anything, even a movement or noise. So to kill time, they talk about their families. When the conversation goes to Will's family, William's face lights up upon hearing that Will has two sons. William changes the topic and shares there are nights when he would see many of them coming back and forth through the woods, but sometimes there are nights when he would not see them at all. Will proposes using lights because he cannot really see anything, even a slight movement. William suddenly shushes them and instructs them to turn off the lights, which they do. He points straight ahead and insists that there is something in front of them. However, Adam and Will can only see darkness, so he prepares to use lights, but then William tells them the creature is gone. The following day, Adam takes the recording to his editor, hoping that the camera has captured anything they haven't seen. However, the editor has raised the brightness, and there is still nothing. Nevertheless, it's still early to give up. So the following day, Adam continues the documentary. William shares the different sketches of monsters that he had commissioned. There is a creature he calls Vance, which has a sack over his head with his face painted on it. William believes that Vance is the Marrow's gatekeeper because he has seen him guide other rejects underground and guards the entrance against humans. William explains that Vance has a sack over his head because what's underneath might be too much to take for humans to see and understand. Not each reject wears bags or masks, but some of them do to hide certain deformities. William shows another sketch, the Frog and Huck. They are like the Siamese twins, 
They are joined through their upper spine and torso. William gets a slip of the tongue and accidentally mentions that his son sketched it. This catches Adam's attention, as William never mentioned any family member before. He repeatedly attempts to inquire about it, but William shuts him down and diverts the topic. Adam lets it go and explains they will eventually need proof of the existence of these monsters for the documentary, and the only way for them to gather that is to put lights on the marrow. Later that night, they observe the entrance, and once again, William points out straight ahead, claiming that something is hiding behind the trees. Adam and Will cannot see anything once more, so even though William warned them before not to use lights, they open the lights. As soon as they turn on the lights, they see a glimpse of a monster right in front of them. The reject disappears quickly, and William expectedly stops the filming. On the other hand, Adam is so psyched after seeing a real-life monster. He argues that just because someone looks different doesn't mean he should be scared. So he takes the video recording to his editor the following day, who expectedly thinks it is a hoax. Adam even shows the footage to an American actor. However, even he believes that the monster caught in the camera is not real. There is a possibility that it is a hoax set up by William. Fast forward to two weeks later, William informs them the rejects are more cautious about their moves since the recent encounter. Will propose an arrangement in which they will install cameras and streetlights around the entrance during the day. They will be on every time, so they can still capture everything even though they are far from the marrow. At first, William does not want to, but he has no choice as Adam needs concrete proof. So they install five cameras and streetlights. Later that day, the sit-in interview continues. William shares the entrances that he found are not always at cemeteries. He also explains if these rejects find out that their home has been discovered by humans, they will move. The entrances will be sealed, like there was nothing ever there. He has a theory that these entrances to the marrow are connected underground somehow. William shares a story about a monster that he encountered. The monster has the body of a feminine woman, but she's always holding an umbrella that covers her head. He saw her pick up a guy for a sexual escapade, and he tried to follow them, but he lost them. After about three weeks, authorities found a body washed up in a river that was unrecognizable and unidentifiable. His entire jaw, hands, and feet were gone. He was just a lump of flesh. Because of the corpse's state, the case remains unsolved to this day. But William strongly believes it is the guy the monster picked up. The following day, Will and one of Adam's producers argue the documentary they are currently working on is risky. William is just showing many photographs and drawings and telling stories about the marrow and the rejects. The monster they saw might be a setup, so there's not much to work on, since there is no concrete evidence. However, it takes a lot more than sensible arguments to make Adam give up his chance to prove that monsters exist. Later that day, while collecting the cameras, camera two goes missing. They go to William's place and check the cameras, and truth to be told, one of the cameras captured something. The three of them are psyched as they watch the footage of a monster crawling out from the marrow. William informs them it is a new species, which he named Little Bigfoot. Adam immediately shows the footage to his editor, who is still skeptical even after watching it. Nevertheless, Adam shuts down his skepticism, as it is undeniably stupid if William had someone hide underground to wait for hours, crawl out of the hole, and just walk away in front of the camera. As Adam leaves for a month-long horror convention tour, the documentary is on hold. As expected, Adam shows the creatures they encounter to writers and directors. He insists they are actual footage and have not been staged. Adam begins to share how William contacted him through email, and now they are working on a documentary about William's discovery. The directors and writers recognize William's name and inform Adam that William is indeed a psycho. It turns out, William has been to multiple Hollywood directors and writers, and he had tried to get them to buy the movie rights to his story. Upon being informed of this, Adam is immediately embarrassed. So as soon as they get back, they invite William out and ask him straight away if he had tried reaching out to other directors and writers to publish his story. William firmly tells Adam he is the only person he reached out to about his story, no one else. Later that day, the editor shows them the recent footage around the marrow while they're gone. William turns off the cameras, but forgets one of them. The one still on captures him communicating or feeding one of the monsters at the marrow. The footage is not that clear, so they cannot see what he's doing, but it is sketchy and weird, whatever it is. We'll once again try to make a sense out of Adam, because the fact that William lied to them is enough to stop the documentary. However, Adam does not want to stop it. He believes that William is experiencing psychosis. He points out William's strange reaction when Will mentioned his kids, and when Adam tried to inquire about his son. 
Adam theorizes that maybe William thinks that his kid is in the marrow. William has no known family members and he has no digital imprint, so no evidence can prove he's mentally ill. However, William mentioned he is a retired police detective. So Adam takes Will to the Boston Police Department, where William claimed he worked. However, the sergeant informs them William has worked with the Boston Police Department. The suspicions about William just keep getting worse as they investigate him. So they gather more footage to confirm that it is a hoax, Adam and Will go to the Marrow. It is late at night and William is unaware of their plan. Adam bravely yells to the monsters, taunting them to come out from underground. The only strange activity they receive is when something or someone takes Adam's boot. But then, as they make fun of each other, William suddenly appears out of nowhere, shocking them. William is enraged because Adam and Will potentially have scared the monsters away. Adam and William begin to argue as Adam has had enough of William's lie and strangeness. As they do, a dwarf-like monster passes by them, and fortunately, Will captures it on the camera. They try to catch it again on camera, but instead, more monsters appear as they have been disturbed by Adam and Will. The trio immediately gets inside the car, where they witness Vance remove the sack over his head, revealing what seems to be tentacles on his back. Vance and some of the monsters charge at them, but fortunately, they are in the car. They immediately drive away and go to William's place, where the argument continues. William tells Adam the monsters know that they have been found, so they will move around. They will close the entrance, but William does not want to lose him. This raises another question, but William changes the topic and asks them to leave. He promises them he will meet them at sunrise, and they can shoot whatever or wherever they want. He just needs time to think, since the sudden events had him frantic. The sunrise arrives, and Adam and Will return to William's place, but no one is answering them. They ask the neighbors about his whereabouts, but as it turns out, the house has been empty for a year. So Adam and Will enter the home and discover William has abandoned the place. They also see the chain room broken, and as they get inside, they find broken chairs and poops. As they observe further, they raise their suspicion that William has someone trapped there. The duel leaves the place and goes to the entrance, only to discover it has been closed. About a month later, since they heard from William, Adam receives a delivery that contains their missing camera. The footage plays, and it shows an unknown someone using the camera. It goes down to the marrow, and reveals a deranged William trapped in a cage. The film ends with the camera person going to Adam's bedroom. It puts down the camera before creeping on Adam and his wife, revealing its monster features. After that, the monster lets out a monstrous roar before attacking Adam and his wife. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.